This one's great. I saw this one and I was like, for sure Ashley's gonna love this this shirt, hundred percent. So this is this is how I roll. <laughs> It's legit. Something I would wear. <laughs> okay, I'll see if they have a version, a, a female version. No crop tops, though. No crop tops. Here, funny fact about Ashley. Oops. Funny fact about Ashley is even if she's ripped, she won't wear crop tops. Because I always feel like I have to suck in. <laughs> so you only see me wear them, like, if it's, like, a photo shoot or, like, a seminar or something like that. But it's not like I think they're the most comfortable thing. You will never find me wearing that to, like, the grocery store. <laughs> I love tank tops. So today's today's podcast, we're going to talk about the awesome weekend you had. I think we're just rolling. Are we just rolling? All right, well. We're rolling like your eyes? We're rolling like my eyes. On your shirt? For all of you listening on podcast, I have a ridiculous shirt on, which is um, we're trying to outdo each other every week. I'm trying to outdo it every week. This is the best. This is the peak. This is my peak of that my. That is the best I've seen so far. Yeah, yeah. the peak so far. It is. It's. It says this is how I roll with a bunch of eye rolling emojis, and it's the eye is it's spelled E Y E E Y E. I love it. It's cute. <laughs> anyway, so this week we're going to talk about the awesome weekend. This was an intense weekend. It was really, really awesome. Yeah. Um, what's really cool is Ashley beat some chick, some random chick's record in the IFBB who had 31 wins. Yeah. I mean, she, lame. she was some some rando. She was all right. <laughs> Ashley beat, beat her record. Word is she's crying. She can't get over it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she now has 32 wins. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations, 32. Ashley. Thank you. I appreciate 32. it. Is it? So Ashley is... And she hates when I say this, but I'm going to keep saying it, and you're just going to have to get over it. The uh, <laughs> She's the most winning IFBB pro in the history of the sport. She'll always back that up by saying, well, bodybuilding's harder. And I'll, <laughs> I'll agree with it. Yeah. I'll agree with it. Um, but, yes, is it – like, it's so funny because, you know, we're, we're friends. And so it's like – and I see you every day at work and whatnot. But it's like I don't – I don't know how I would – if I never saw you ever, and I saw you once the first time, I was like, dang, that's the girl who has the most wins ever. Like, I would think that, because I'm a fan of the sport, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I w is it, does it ever feel weird, like, doing these things at all at this point? Like, it, I mean, does it feel weird? I get, like, sometimes some people come up to me, and they're so excited. It's very flattering, but it always catches me off guard. I'm like, who, me? Are you talking to me? <laughs> oh, oh, hi. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they never really expect it or assume it like you know especially in areas that aren't like um you know it's not like an expo or something so that's why I'm yeah sometimes I get caught off guard but it does feel kind of cool it's very flattering you know so yeah I don't know how I did that but it's pretty crazy how to get this far who knows so just a girl from Akron Ohio so well <laughs> I think you're you've crossed you've crossed past that point have you lived out of Akron Ohio now that as long as you lived in Akron Ohio not yet no, no. I lived there till I was like what mm, 24 Oh wow! Okay, that was maybe. Well, that was pretty recent. I didn't realize how recent that was. Yeah, it was. I just felt like you were in LA for a long time. Oh, too longer than I should have been. <laughs> longer than four, you four been. years, I think. Or yeah, something. yeah, longer yeah. than I should have been. Poor LA. LA used to be so awesome, man. I used mm. to look forward to it so much and going to Venice. And now it's like you can't even walk on the sidewalk. There's just homeless people I in front know. of Venice Beach, you know, and stuff. And it's like, it sucks. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt really out of place there anyway. Like, I mean, I'm not, I never really moved to LA to be like an actress or a model. It wasn't even like that. I just like the environment and atmosphere and the weather, of course. The you weather's know, awesome. I just wanted yeah. something opposite of Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, it really turned kind of crappy towards it's the end. I lived, at, uh, I lived up in Hollywood on like the Starwalk, like a super touristy area. Yeah, I, was, I never really fit in there. I was, it definitely lives up to some stereotypes with the people. Let me just say that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone it was, thinks it was something. It was fun visiting you, though. It was yeah. nice It was nice to always have a room in uh, on Hollywood Boulevard, and it'd be fun. We'd do our workout, and then I'd go and hang out. And then it, and then at the end, it was like, yeah, I'm going to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <gonna> stay here. <laughs> so, so anyway, the weekend happened. Ashley, tell us a little bit about the show. And I think what we're going to go into today, too, is about um, – how you should look at yourself after a show. Uh, we had a really good weekend with the team, too. How you should look at yourself after a show, what you should do after the show, how you analyze and things like that. But first, tell me how, how about the show. How did it all go? How did you feel? Oh, the show was amazing. It, it was put on by Spectrum Fitness Productions, and it was called the Golden State Championships. And it was conveniently located in Sacramento, California, which is a nice one-hour flight, same time zone, which 
I don't think people realize how like traveling from time zone to time zone can really take a toll on your body. And anytime I go to the East Coast, I have to come in extra early. I lose a whole day. My sleep is even more messed up than it usually is. Um, so it was nice to have like a closer show that I can compete in. Um, and I just flew in on Friday morning and then, you know, checked in everything. But I tried a new suit uh, this weekend oh, yeah. and Adam really likes it. It was a really cool suit. I did. Yeah, it set the internets on fire. Yeah, everyone loved it. Just the way it shined and stuff. So um, if you guys didn't see it, it was a a bluish green suit but the reflection and the the crystal design on it just added all this like cool dimension and sparkle and we i've been naming my suits lately by the way <laughs> so that one because because when i put in my order with angel competition bikinis instead of being like i want that one suit with the hologram kelly green background with the stone and that's because this is a lot i just name them so this one was named planet earth okay so this one was named planet earth because it's got like deep ocean tones in it but also grass green and some lighter sky blue just like the atmosphere you know just like planet earth it very much gave me planet earth vibes okay but the ring on the outside was like a darker and then it like faded into the lighter colors and it was on a green background it was so pretty it was oh it's gorgeous um but yeah I, like I, i'm i'm like having fun experimenting with suits now because my fear you know has been with the suit change is like Will they still recognize me? Do I have to start my whole career over? I don't want to <laughs> be like an unknown, you know. I want them to recognize me. So like I was I'm always afraid to switch up the suits, but I think I'm in a comfortable position now where I can play around a little bit. So I'll I'll continue to play around. But yeah, this one was called Planet Earth and I'm gonna this weekend I'm gonna wear one called Grasshopper. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And then oh wait, are you naming these or is Angel's naming? I'm naming these? them. Okay. I also named um, one that I haven't worn yet is cranberry sauce because it looks like the color of cranberry sauce and it has like chunks of like pieces of cranberry in there, okay. like darker. Um, the one I wore to the Arnold uh, is called the Legend Number no. Two, which is a revised version of Legend Number no. One, which is the suit I wore on my thirtieth pro win, which was uh, the record. Okay. So. The Arnold suit was the legend too. So if anybody wants a suit out there and you want you like that suit I wore, you say I want the Planet Earth. Okay. That's what you say? That's cool. And use code Ashley K Fit at checkout for a discount. There you go. <laughs> I actually really did I really did like that suit. Yeah, I, really I know. I will say though, with that suit, it was super unique and really cool and like vivid, I guess. However, I will say I do think green and red is a little more suiting for me. But I'm still going to wear that one for some shows. Yeah. So I'm not retiring that suit anytime soon. Yeah. It's too cool. It took it took a lot to get her to go red. And now we've gotten kind of into the blue tones a little bit. And I do want to one day hopefully get her the, in this like... The royal. Well, guys, if you're watching on video, can you see the her in blue? Look at that contrast it has on her skin tone. That is actually really good contrast. You can't argue that. So yeah. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just planting seeds right now. I know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. See, we're kind of like getting closer to yeah, it. Like I, right now we're a green blue, but it's still technically green because yeah, of the base. It's because of... <laughs> and then maybe it could be like completely covered in blue, but if it, it is not any green showing, but if it has green base, she's gonna be like, because if, it's, if I, it's green, <laughs> they won't recognize me if it's yeah. blue. <laughs> she thinks they won't recognize her if she wears a different I color don't know. suit. It's so funny. I'm very stubborn with change, though, when it comes you to are, this. Even with you hair. You're just to see with all change. Even when it comes <laughs> to the hair, I'm like, oh, my God, I've been wearing straight hair all year, and now I have a little bit of curl in it. Are they still going to know it's me? <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh, it changed my shoe from strap to strapless. Are they are they still going to recognize me? <laughs> <laughs> you got a system that works. That's funny. Yeah, I don't know. So, But I, you know what? I'm getting a little more loosey-goosey with it, so thank Thanks for encouraging me to make little changes because it's a lot of fun. You know, I yeah. think one cool thing about show day and guys don't get to experience this, but girls do. It's like I get to play dress up for a day, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Like think about how much um, thought girls put into like, let's say their wedding dress and how they're going to do their hair on wedding day and their makeup. It's kind of like that. Every time I compete, it's like, hmm, what kind of suit can I wear with what kind of makeup shades and my hair? It's kind of like I literally get to be a princess for a day, which I freaking love. It's so <laughs> cool. Get to play dress up. So, yeah. so fun. That is, I, I, can't, I can't imagine. I don't know. I so. know. Immense <laughs> yeah, so competitors. Easy. It's, it's so just easy. like you change the color of your board shorts. I thought it was super cool. What I would do, you know what I would do in men's physique just so I could be unique is I was... I would go on eBay and buy my trunks oh. because if you went to the store, everyone bought those oh, trunks. Yeah. 
that were at the store. So I'd go on eBay and try to find like old trunks, like, you know, like, like really old ones if I could find them. And, uh, you'd usually get them for like 20 bucks, which is awesome. Instead of like a hundred now, the men's physique, like board shorts are like a hundred bucks now. Jeez. Why? It's crazy. You know? So, um, so yeah, you get it for like 20 bucks and then you'd find like these crazy different colored shorts and he'd be the only one that has them like almost guaranteed every time so that was kind of fun yeah. I had my little and then were, all the guys backstage would be like oh where'd you get those and I'm like oh you can't get these <laughs> I'm not telling you <laughs> it, but it was it was literally my show prep was so easy it was like just go put your hands through your hair I did my own tan like pro tan and uh shorts for 20 bucks that's like that's like it Jeez. <laughs> like, like oh I gotta be on stage in 30 all right let's get let's get this going you were saving some money though <laughs> you know yeah, yeah it was a little bit easy that well I was just you know what it was it was because I was resistant to change too yeah. because when I when I was a kid and I competed they didn't have like spray tanners we just we always had just pro tan so it was like wipe on and we had mm -hmm. that dream tan stuff which was oh. terrible oh my gosh dream tan um it's like they still use it in like um they use it in I want to say in India still a lot of the guys still use it but it's like a it's like a cream almost. It's like yeah, a, a lotion. Yeah, it wipes off. It yeah. doesn't stain. It just kind of wipes, right? Yeah, it's a, exactly. It's like a lotion that stays on top of your skin that's tanned, and it's like it gives you this like gold color. I mean, they have all these crazy glitter golds almost, yeah. and like it looks kind of cool. But if you you can't touch anything, like literally goes like if you accidentally hit the wall, you'll just completely smear the wall. So that stuff was. But anyway, I never used it, so I was just like used to it. So I was like, my stuff was super cheap. That's probably <laughs> good for photo shoots, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, it makes you look like a statue, like yeah. a legit like a legit statue it's, it's funny so anyway so the um, yes yeah, so it was a spectrum show which is an awesome production yeah. one of the bigger productions out there oh, they yeah. always do a really good job they treat the competitors so nicely and we get little goodie bags yeah, and everything and i get feel a special crown for the a pros crown. always get crowns um is it everyone gets a crown there right or, or um, just the top I, six sometimes they'll all get crowns but i think for this one top um, six. Days. Okay, it was a big show, so yeah. that's probably why. It yeah, like it was surprisingly pretty big. Like, I mean, twenty three competitors. Yeah. I think like four girls were from last year's Olympia too. So yeah, yeah it's it was like deep. it's never easy. I'm telling you guys. Like yeah, there's no easy show. There is no such thing as an easy show, which is like you know I think a lot of people assume that like oh you know just because it's not something like the Arnold Classic or Pittsburgh Pro or New York Pro that it's small or easy. It's never easy, and I will say even sometimes like my hardest um even like the the what the the shows that I like barely won or whatever were smaller shows like it you would think that it would be the opposite but it doesn't yeah they're just you never know you it's, never know it's yeah, never easy you just it, it's like any show like even if you're an amateur and you look awesome it just takes one person showing up that you know changes the whole level of competition you know yeah. and it's like that's you just never know who's going to show up totally. could be five Olympians it could be you know all first timers you just don't you can't register for a show knowing that which is exactly which is the thing you know so yeah. I, I've seen I've seen like even small like Denver shows where it was like a small show and then the girl's like I'm like who who even is this like who's mm -hmm. this girl and then she goes on and wins a pro credit nationals like a, a you know a few months later and you're like that was crazy right not <laughs> only that is like you know uh, the competition that shows up can make can kind of make you look a certain way for example if I Let's say last weekend I showed up my normal self, but everyone else was um, more uh, soft than me, like, and I was the leanest one. Then, like, it it makes me look leaner. <laughs> it was just because of the camera. Yeah, <laughs> so it may, it would make me look too lean if everyone was way softer. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like the shows, yeah, the shows depending on yeah. Who the shows so you know, even even if it's like a, a judge you're familiar with, it it can. Especially in bikini, you know, it's just like it, the other competitors will make you look a certain way in yeah. for the better or for worse. But and that's good to talk about, too, for athletes out there that are looking to. This is the problem you run into with bikini. Um, sometimes you'll look perfect for your look and you'll go to like it's, this happens a lot more at the local level. It doesn't really happen too often at a at a pro show. It does. It occasionally does happen. It's very it's rare, but it does happen where let's say there's 15 girls in your class at like a regional level, local show, whatever. And 13 of them showed up with like the softer bikini look and two of them look like pro ready bikini look. Well, the two that look pro ready though, they're more likely to go, you know, win that pro card will most likely look too hard that day because mm -hmm. everyone else is so soft around them. And you can't, it's just something you can't account for in bikini. It's one of those like rare things that happens. It does happen. It's rare, but yeah, it can sway, it can sway things. And that's happened. You've seen it happen before at pro shows, usually not 
in the softer category too often. It, I've seen it happen a couple times uh, more frequently in the harder category where everyone's hard and it's like, whoa, this. And then that was like, that girl who won was really hard. Well, everyone was hard around them. So like they kind of picked the mm-hmm. best of what they had to choose from. Exactly. And you'll see yeah. some weird ones every now and then. And then everyone's like, What's really funny is everyone on the internet is like, oh, they're changing bikini again. I'm like, give it a week. Let's see what happens. Like, it was yeah. like it was, that happens every single time. Yeah. So. Right. And the lighting as well has oh, yeah. a lot to do with it. You might look at a photo from a show and be like, whoa, these girls are so soft. Or, oh, these girls are so ripped. But lighting will, and, and the way the, the pictures are taken definitely plays a big role in that. For one is like, obviously the lighting is, is the lights coming from overhead or are they coming straight on? For example, last weekend, the lights were more like straight on, which made us look a little, um, I guess, softer than what we would look like with lights that came from above. Um, cause lights from above tend to create shadows, right? Yeah. So less shadowy, um, but it made my makeup look nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like some beauty lights. Um, so, and, and then also the angle of which the, the photographer is taking photos as well. Like, is it a stage that's really high up? So he's shooting all the way from the bottom to like the top and it makes everyone look tall and lean? Or th- is it a stage that's like shorter and they're shooting more like waist level straight on kind of? That would make us look more, I guess, curvier and shorter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot, a lot has to do with it. So truly it, it goes without saying you actually do have to be there to really get a good idea of the lineup and how people actually look. So, you know, something to consider. Yeah, something to consider, especially as a pro too, because a lot of times the good thing is with pros, you usually have you usually have that information if it's a show that happened a few times or the year prior or whatever, if it's the same location, you know. So you could look at the pictures of the year prior. How is everyone looking? Is it harder lights? Whatever is it? Is it blown out light where it's just really, really soft lighting when you might have to come in a little bit harder to account for that, that type of thing? So all these little things happen at the at the pro level. And um, also you can look at it for like nationals too. What was the lighting like last year at USA's or lighting last year at whatever, you know? So you can kind of look at those things and decide, yeah. you know, how hard do you need to come? If it's usually you don't need to change it too much. It's just a matter of if the if it's like a hotel lighting and all the lights are on inside the stage, you'll, you'll tend to want to be a little bit harder because it, it softens you up quite a bit. Versus like real hard lighting, you know, or if it's like filled lighting where there's bottom lights and top lights and you come on, it'll soften you up a little bit. So it's little things, Mm -hmm. little things to consider like that. So, um, but everything went pretty smooth. I think your, your posing routine was great. I loved your suit. Yes, of course. Um, and how, how do you feel about how that everything went? I feel great. I mean, it was pretty smooth. Um, you know, no, there's never been a show that I did everything perfect and I came in perfectly. You know, there's a few things that I would, if, if I were to choose, um, I, I would have done a little bit better, but I always like to use the analogy though. Like if I were to roll the dice and do it all over again, would I risk like coming in how I thought I should or should I just stay here where it's safe and I got a perfect score so I can't complain um so I yeah I'm happy with my look I don't I wouldn't want to like redo it but um yeah I think there's a few things I can work on and that's just me being super picky you know because you even if you win there's things you can fix I promise you there's things you can improve on no show is perfect there is going to be something even if it's super subtle even if it's like forgetting to move your hair off your shoulder in one of the poses or something there's always going to be a little something you can fix or do better or come in uh with a little different conditioning so there's always something so never become um I guess too uh complacent even if you're doing well because there's always improvements to be made and you'll find that as you get closer to you know competing at the olympia or doing these bigger shows or whatever when there's a lot of good girls um you'll want to definitely make sure that those are on point you know rather than just being complacent uh just because you won a um a show that uh, that uh, wasn't considered to be like a high tier show you know yeah yeah so an important thing to go into like after a show and we had a we had a show this weekend too which was um so we have the Cutler Classic out here, which was it was an awesome show. Remy promoted it. Remy's also an IFBB judge, um, been a show promoter. Do you know he's been doing this for 40-something years? And like, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he I must be so passionate about it. Yeah, yeah it's, it was pretty cool. I talked to him a little bit about it. I didn't realize it was that long. I knew it was, I mean, it was as long as I've been doing it. I just didn't know it was, like, that long. You know, it was just crazy. So, um, 
yeah, so it was really cool. We had uh, we had some good moments. We had a, quite a few first places. We actually had one. We had one class. We had two classes actually. No, three classes. I'm sorry, three classes where our we had like the number of girls that we had in it finished in first, second, third place or first, oh, second congrats, place. Congrats, Team Elite Physique. That's yeah. what's up. It's pretty fun when you could do Heck that. Yeah, congrats, like, ladies. Yeah, that was pretty great. We finished. Yeah. There was one that had. I think I had like twelve girls in it, and we finished one, two, three. Ooh. And then it, it <laughs> what's funny is I have a friend that he was like messing with me because we kept posting that we were doing it. it was like one and two, one, two, three, one, two. It was like and we were just like we're doing really good, you know, and um. And then he texts me, he's like, politics. <laughs> it was so funny because, you know, people always do stupid stuff like that. They're like, oh, it's politics. Oh. He was like, and he was like, he said politics. He was like just messing with me. It was so oh, funny. I was, I was cracking up. And uh, it was just, it was hilarious. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, people always make, I mean, I know he was joking, yeah. but people do really make yeah, that excuse. It's that. like. Uh, it kind of makes me do the the eye roll like the one that's on your shirt. Like, <laughs> listen, guys, I hate to break it to you, but judges, they they don't got time to research who the heck you are. Yeah. They don't they have don't time care. to research who coaches you. They're busy. They're busy yeah. people. They're not on Instagram all day looking up your hashtag. Is that, no. Yeah. Duh, come on. It's. No, no. Yeah, it was yeah. funny. Well, it's even to the extent where, like, I was sitting like after the at the overall, I was sitting with I was sitting with Remy, who's the show promoter in the in the front row, and then um, the overall came out. There was like I think there was six, was there six classes or eight classes? I think was there, there was an age class. So okay, there's eight classes. <laughs> I had to do the count. There's eight classes. So um, yeah, and then we had two of our girls were in the overall. And Remy's like, uh, he's like, you have, you have girls in here? I was like, yeah, we got two. We'll see what happens, you know? And he's sitting next to me and, um, he's like, well, and I'm, and they're not getting moved in. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't think today's the day. He's like, well, you can't be too mad. You got two girls in the overall, you're the only one with two girls in there. But like, he didn't even know who they were, mm -hmm. what their names were, you know, that type of thing. So it was like, it's like, dude, you guys, they don't, they don't know. They don't care. They're just looking for the best physique. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> they, they do not care. Yeah. So. They don't have time guys. I'm sorry <laughs> to tell you, but they're not creeping on your Instagram. Yep. You yep. So. <laughs> and it goes by so fast too, right? Yeah. Like the judges, I got to give it to him because they have to really like calculate things fast because it's all numerical. Right. So yeah. like, they're like, in their mind is working so fast to, you know, get everyone tallied up and get them in the position that they need to be in. They don't really got time to think who's who and who. Well, not just that. Too. It's hard to even know who they are too, yeah, like because exactly. they look different, you know. So we had, um, like, we had Cheryl who was there and she was competing, and she was on stage, but she was like far away. And then, you know, I saw her, but then when she was on stage, I didn't know it was her. Like it's hard to because they're you know farther away, their makeup, hairs, all that. And we had someone in, in that class, we had first and third. And I was like, oh, man, I was like, well, first and third's good, you know. And then I'm like looking closer and looking closer. And it took me like a few minutes. I'm like, oh, wait, that's Cheryl. Oh, we got first, second, and third. I was like. <laughs> yeah, you do that to me all the time. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I've done it. You know, it's funny. The, the worst story, the worst one was, um, and I, I think I have an issue with like seeing, like I have an issue. I've, I don't know. I'm kind of coming to the conclusion that I have sometimes the issues with like seeing people like in, in all that, I don't know, faces recognition. I don't know. But um, Marie, you know, and I was with, you know, I was with her. We dated for eight years, you know, and uh, she was backstage and um, we were great friends and everything. And she was backstage and she was like walking around backstage all morning, all prejudging. And I didn't, I didn't recognize her. And she thought I was mad at her or something. And she was like, and then I heard her laugh and I turned around and I was like, it was at night show. And I was like, where, where were you all day? I was looking for you all the time. She's like, you walked by me like three times. I thought you were mad. And I'm like, you just didn't stop me. You're like, why are you mad or something? She's like, I don't know. It's not you're busy or something. I was like, I did. I had, I had no idea it was her. She had her hair, makeup, you know, all the, she's totally done up. And that was like, I was like, man, I really have a issue with like recognizing these girls and like all their stage makeup and stuff or whatever. And, um, I felt so, I felt so bad. I went the Aww. whole morning without saying anything before her first show. Whoopsies. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, that was pretty funny. She didn't hold me to it too hard though. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we had a, we had a good show. Everything went really smooth. We had a competitor. I mean, it was a crazy, it was actually one of my favorite weekends, um, that we've had in a long time. The only, you know, the sad thing is I wasn't at your show, which it would have been super easy to go to your show if it wasn't a Cutler. We had the, we had the Cutler show here already planned. Um, we had a girl in Australia compete, and she did really good. Madison, she got top three. And Australia is like, congrats, Madison. Yeah, she's got crazy shape, uh, but it's so hard. It's so like that's a really hard area to compete in. And she's been trying to compete because Australia was like really strict lockdown. So we started and stopped so many preps because the shows oh. like last year, 
And so this one, we were like, you know, it was nice to finally get her on stage. That was like, a, I was like, okay, cool. We're open again. <laughs> if Australia's doing shows, we're, we're good to go. Australia with no masks on stage. Okay, we're... We're we're out of this. Uh, <laughs> we're we're out of this thing. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm salty. I didn't get to cheer everyone on though. I miss I miss that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. We have this I have this thing where Ashley is is boycotted from my barbecues. So <laughs> <laughs> every time he has a barbecue, it's when I'm out of town. I feel so bad. So I've had one. Here's a, we'll tell the we'll tell the story. So. I had, I've only, we've only done like one barbecue at like the prep center and Ashley wasn't there that day, but we had it planned and Ashley, you know, Ashley sometimes isn't sure if she's going to do a show until a couple weeks out. And so we'll plan something like, you know, a month, two months out. And then I'm like, oh, we already got these things planned with the team. So I can't go to that show, whatever. And then, um, so this one, we planned the barbecue and she went, she was competing and then they, the interview, you tell the interviewer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the interviewer, I did like an interview after like I won this one show. And um, they're like, yeah, so where's Coach Adam? And, and like without even like thinking of how it like comes across, I was like, oh, he's at a barbecue. <laughs> like what kind of coach is this? Like I'm going to have, I'm going to go to this barbecue instead of her show. <laughs> like, you know, so I didn't even think about it until after the fact. But I'm like, so you know funny. what? That didn't probably didn't come across. <laughs> Like maybe I should have elaborated a little more like, on yeah, that. So I mean, it was true though. That is true. where you were. I was doing it. There was just happened to be like forty people that were pre-planned. But it was, so it if was, there's ever a show that you see me at and Adam's not there, he's salty. probably at a barbecue. <laughs> he's so salty. Dude. He's probably at a barbecue <laughs> eating a chicken wing. Or yeah. Something. <laughs> so we. So it was funny. I was like, we're trying. So these shows, like I always try to do like team things after like a team show, and our next team show is. Um, is it Patriots before? No, I'll be there. Yeah, the mile I'll high. Be competing there too. Yeah, the mile high, and then Patriots will be oh, like I'll team be shows. Both of those, and so those will be fun shows. And we try to get like the group of everyone together, and then we try to do something after the show, like dinner or something, if we can. A lot of times, people want to go. The problem is, is people someone want to do sushi, someone want to do pizza, someone's family's there they haven't seen in a while. Like it's so. It, a lot of times, it doesn't happen, or it comes out too late. Yeah, or it's show. too late. Um, well, they, I guess they, they. Okay, so. I learned something new this weekend. Um, and as far as I know, this is a new thing, but it is a rule. Um, so if the show has 150 or more people in it, the promoter, um, because the shows were running too long, like some of these shows are finished like 1 a.m. and the judges are, you know, they're all morning, all night. Um, the They're not doing individual routines at night anymore for if it has 150 or more people in bikini and figure all of them. So you just come out for amateurs for amateurs for amateurs. So um, you'll do your individual routine in the morning only. And then you'll do your you'll just come out and they'll say your name and you come out to the center box and you still do your like you come out, you do your front pose and you say hi and then you walk to the line. But you're not doing your full routine anymore. Cause it, but it, it did make the show end at like eight, which was pretty nice for a 170 something person show. So that was nice. So we we're able to go. Mm. And, and I was like, well, we're trying to get like you can't make reservations that are like for 20 people and then be like, well, somewhere between seven and 10. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know where it's going to end. So like, oh, let's just do a barbecue at my house. And I like threw this last minute barbecue together and ended up being like so fun that we're going to do it now. I think we're going to do it off. We're going to do it every like team show here, I think. Oh, good. And then maybe we'll do it like at opposing seminar here oh, and there I too. Like yeah. That. It's, it was a really good time. The girls had s'mores and. Speaking of posing seminars. Yes. Real quick. Let's plug it. Let's plug it. It's April 23rd, right? April 23rd. April 23rd, Contest Prep Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Tell them the address. 1176 Vegas Valley Drive, 10 a.m. till 1130. We have a beginner. We have bikini posing, and we have a beginner and, um, we don't want to call it advanced, but beginner and um, experienced, I would say, um, class. So two separate in the same time. Angels Competition Bikinis is sponsoring this one. They're going to be here with the pop-up shop. Um, they are going to, you can do your try on your suits, see all the colors, do a fitting, all that. And then they're going to do, they're going to do a giveaway too. Um, one giveaway is a photo shoot with you. Woo. That's going to be cool. I hope you win that, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> so you can enter, so you can enter to win a photo shoot with Ashley. And then also they're going to And no, I don't choose the winner. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'm going to, uh, I have a, I have a muscle leg, um, gift card I can give away too. So we'll give away muscle leg. And, uh, if you use code team elite physique, uh, on muscle egg. I think there is no code. It's a link. Oh, link. So muscle, muscle egg.com forward slash team elite physique. Yeah. And then you can get a, a, a code. You get a discount with that. Um, and then I'll, we're going to, I think Angel's going to give away a posing suit too. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to do some, make something nice, but yeah, it'll be cool. And it's free. You don't have to register for it. So don't, um, 
Yeah. Yes. And, and, yeah. and you don't yeah. have to be part of the team either. Nope. It, you know, just roll on in and be like, yo, what's up? But I'll be there too. So yeah. I hope to see some of you guys from the podcast there. That'll be so fun. Yeah. So yeah, we got some, we got some new, some new plans coming for the prep center too soon. And actually I have to, I have to show you our equipment list. We ordered, we ordered some new oh. equipment. Yeah. How exciting. It's a lot of pieces. More booty stuff. More booty, a lot of booty stuff. Hey. Yeah. Leg and booty stuff. So we're going to do some cool stuff at the gym here. And now we're just waiting on the equipment to arrive, but I'm going to turn the prep center. I guess this is the first initial. This is the first official announcement, huh? Yeah. I, haven't I don't know. You didn't tell me yet. Yeah. <laughs> did you tell me? <laughs> I told what oh, you. Oh, you did tell me. I just okay. didn't show you the equipment yet. Okay. Um, so yeah, we are turning the contest prep center main gym into an all leg and booty gym and we're going to do booty workshops here and you're going to have people like sam and ashley and courtney all them i think anya too teaching like their own booty boot camps here a few times a week and they're all going to coordinate that um that'll be like a drop-in thing and it's going to go towards to the coach i'm not going to give you guys that i don't want to take anything of that so whatever you guys are you going to participate bring. in the booty boot camp oh i probably you need to work on your glutes i bro. know i know like that's I embarrassing, know. you know. Well, I mean, you're I supposed to be coaching me. You got to have a great <laughs> I know, set I, of glutes. I need to bake some biscuits of my own. <laughs> <laughs> Baking <laughs> so, some biscuits. Just baking biscuits. That's all I do all day long, baking <laughs> biscuits. I uh, Yeah, well, see, here's the thing. I was trying to give you more points, and I felt like by based on perception, and, and if I had smaller glutes, yours would look bigger. Oh, that's true. So you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. So you're okay. welcome. Yeah. That was very <laughs> thoughtful of you, Adam. It's not that I hate leg day. Well, you know, you can... Tone down your arms a little bit while <laughs> yeah, we're at yeah, it yeah. to make me look a little bigger, too. Yeah. Well, I thought you were doing that for me. <laughs> look, I got some noodles. Yeah, that was, we, we're, still, we're still working on the noodles for noodles. Ashley. So, and speaking of which, we have to go into post-show. Okay, so everyone, there's a lot of people competed this weekend. I, I, we, had a, we had a crazy weekend. Just, um, we had a girl in Uruguay win. We had um, Australia, Chicago, Texas. Las Vegas and California, of course. Um, so that was a crazy weekend. What a show. What a show weekend. That was really fun. So exciting. I had a really good time this weekend. It takes so much out of you, though, doesn't it? You know what's funny? I think it's later. I think it's because it's early in the season. I was just fine. But I think later in the season, when you have days like that, you're like, uh -huh. you have, you feel like, uh, like hungover, like you said. Yeah, like the, the post-show post -show hangover. No alcohol involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just feel like you got hit by a bus. That's what happens to me usually like the day after a show or on a Monday. For It, it got me yesterday. I was like so like drained and weak. Like even just walking on the treadmill was like a task. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> Just so like funny. so drained. <laughs> just like mentally. Because it's like you give... You give it your everything, you know, even even though on show day you're not like it's not like you're putting your body necessarily through like a hard workout or anything. We're just, you know, we're holding poses for a long period of time. That's not that's mostly not it. it I think it has something to do with like the adrenaline, like you um, your emotions and your adrenaline and the hype and you get nervous and you're just you give a lot of emotion on that day. You give a lot and it just drains you. Yeah. And just like, oh. Just need a day just to not do anything and just to wear my pajamas and no makeup. You know, those are needed. <laughs> but I feel good today, though. So yeah. I'm back at it. Back seem, to the regular schedule. You seem chipper. Yes, I'm very chipper. And today. you have your five days out from another show. I am five days out. Yeah, yeah that's Salt cool. Lake City. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna wear the grasshopper suit. There we go. It's gonna be a good one. I'm a, so I so uh, so post show. Post show. Here's the thing. We're gonna go into like what you guys should be doing post show, and this is what we're gonna. Do. Uh, Ashley's actually already done it. She got feedback from Sandy. We know what we need to work on, um, and it's kind of what we've been talking about prior. But one of the things that I think is the most helpful. So I get I get pictures sent in to me all the time from girls who are on my team and not on my team or whatever, and they do these physique assessments where they submit their pictures online in a physique assessment link. And then we analyze, I analyze their physique. I send them a video back of what they need to work on and kind of give them a breakdown. And I think that a lot of people don't really look at their pictures. This is the important time to look at your pictures and look at what you need to work on. And I tried to do it uh, with everyone that we have that competes. So you compete. It's when you look your best. You can see your tie-ins. You could see your, um, you, could, you could see all the detail, you know, at that point. It's hard to do a physique assessment when you have 30 pounds to lose and you can't really see the detail, the tie-ins and all that. But once you're under the stage and you have your tan and suit and all this, you can really analyze, okay, where do I need to make the improvements at? And so that's something that everyone should be doing and then creating a plan around that. Like, okay, you need more upper glute. You need to be a tiny bit tighter next time. You need to be 
um, your hair was whatever, hiding your shoulders, et cetera. So you got to look at these things, look at your total final presentation, analyze it, analyze your posing video, um, and, and do all those things in the right after you get off stage um, and, and review it, you know, send your pictures into your coach and re have them review it and say, hey, what do I need to work on? Do I need to change my workout plan? Like what's, what do we need to do here? And um, come up with a game plan. And I think that a lot of times people just, they don't do that. They look at their pictures. It's like, oh, I look so good and it was cool and it was fun. And like, they don't really look at, okay, now we need to look at what do we need to improve on? And we were doing that on like right after a Sunday, I think we're doing it on your, on the stuff that we were yeah. looking at. Like there's, and it was for her, it's like, obviously it's these tiny little things. So it's like, it's, you literally have to like really search for them and then you pick on them and you're like, okay, this is what we need, you know? So, um, we're trying to create perfection at this point. So, um, it's, yeah, so it's something that, that all of you should be doing and really analyze it. You know, your, your coach should be able to do it for you. You could send them in me obviously. Um, but it is, it is something that's critical, I think, in making your improvements. And we always talk about that. You have your people who are chasing their last physiques. They go too far in the off season and they're just chasing the last physique. And then you have the other people who keep excelling and they're trying to improve on that physique and keep improving, improving, improving. And that's how you do it. You do your show, look at your pictures, come up with a new plan, attack the weak areas, do another show, look at the weak areas, attack a new plan and keep going and keep going versus just trying to get back to where you were, back to where you were, you know? So um, that's, I think, the one of something that everyone needs to really do and look at, especially everyone. There's so many people that competed this weekend. Obviously, there was a ton of shows. Look at your pictures when you get them, send them in to your coach, get that analysis done, figure out what you need to work on from there and improve. Mm -hmm. So, and that's something that you're really good at. Yeah, you your, know, I try to be really picky. Um, like I said, I never, no one's ever had a show where, everything is literally perfect. Even if you get a perfect score, there are things you can work on, you know? So getting that information is so valuable. You know, if you can stay after and get it from a judge, it's so valuable because you got to realize too, you're looking at your own physique through like competitor eyes, <laughs> which I get a lot too. You know, you might think like, oh man, I'm not lean enough or, oh, I'm, I'm to this or to that. But that's because you're seeing yourself like through that competitor's lens and yeah. not necessarily um, the lens of a judge or a coach that can kind of be not not as ob objective or whatever. So they can be less less biased. And you know what I mean? Because I think we all have flaws that we're hyper aware of. And sometimes it's a flaw that maybe you think it's a lot bigger deal than what it actually is and maybe the judges don't even know or pick up on it or on the opposite end you could have a flaw that you're not even aware of but the judges see it and it's good to be aware of that so you can better um prepare for the next show with that in mind yeah i think that's a, a good way of looking at it so and then with that then we talk about you know going into your post-show diet and post-show cardio and so um yeah so i think it's important to to look at the plan Look at your physique and then come up with a plan. Your plan might be to just compete again soon. If you're yeah. if you're already mostly there, it might be just be like, hey, just keep going. You know, just keep going. Let's get you to nationals and get you a pro card. Um, but it might be, okay, a total revamp, you know. Mm -hmm. And then in the revamp scenario where you're trying to kind of recomp, the goal in the off season should be to get your calories as high as possible and to get your cardio as low as possible um, to, with you maintaining close to the body fat level of your of where you're currently at right now, obviously not maintaining stage lean all the time. That's not, that's not really, it's, it's too much effort. I want to say people are like, it's impossible to do. It's not impossible to do. It's just, it's a lot, it's a lot more effort and it's going to hinder your growth, but, um, staying relatively lean is, is important. And then just, you know, getting your calories low as you are high as you can and your cardio as low as you can creates a good starting point for your next prep. As long as your body fat's there too, because yeah. it's a lot easier to start a prep. If you're eating, let's say 2000 calories, 2,500 calories a day, and you're doing 15 minutes of cardio four days a week, and that's your starting point, but you're just as lean or almost as lean as where you were on stage, and then you just reverse those things. You just start increasing your cardio a little bit. You decrease your calories a little bit, and next thing you know, you're starting to prep at, you know, 1,800 calories with 30 minutes of cardio four times a week, five times a week because you maintained your body fat and you fixed your – you got your metabolic rate up full speed in the off season without having to, like, lose now 30 pounds and having to get back down hard again. And that's, that's where we lose people in the industry is where they're constantly just going through these – grind preps you know yeah. so um so yeah that's that should be the the plan of attack after that and then it's i think it's kind of fun too because you're you're looking at your physique in a different way after every show and i think that keeps it motivating too because you're first you're looking at your physique you're like i just want to do a bikini and then it was like okay i just want to do a bikini but i need to get my shoulders a little wider right and then it's like okay now i wanted to get to the pro bikini 
and I really need to round out my glutes and my tie-ins need to be a tiny bit better. My shoulders are fine now, but my lat width needs a tiny bit, right? And then the next show you do, and you're like, okay, my lats are good now, my shoulders are good now, my density is not there. So I'm going to start, you know, lifting harder for this, right? And that's like you keep making these evolutions, and then the next thing you know, you know, you're doing these tiny things like Ashley's doing now, which is like these little, little tiny things. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. That's a, makes it fun. You know, yeah. it keeps it interesting. Yeah, I think like the biggest mistake um, post show is, um, you know, depending on when you're competing next. So whether you're going into off season or you're going to compete again next week, that's obviously going to you're going to have to be a lot more careful with your post show meal um, if you're competing the next week or even the week after. Uh if you know you have another show coming up rather than going into an off season. But regardless, um, I will say this, you know, for those of you who are planning on competing like the following week and, you know, keep in mind that's not suitable for everyone. Okay. Um, you got to kind of be in a good place to do that. And, um, you know, there's some things that you're not going to be able to fix in that one week period of time. But then again, there are some things that you can fix in that one period of one week period of time. So if it's something posing related, uh, something hair makeup related, obviously you can fix that in a week. If you need to get a little bit leaner, you can fix that in a week. Okay. Um, but if it's something like you need to put on more muscle there, you know, that's going to take a little bit longer to do uh, a lot of bit longer to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can, you know, you might be able to play around a little bit with being fuller and that might give the illusion that you, you know, put on a little bit of mu- more muscle, um, sometimes, but not all the time. So that only assuming that you were kind of flat in the other show, but, um, so if, if you're competing in a, in a week or two weeks, you got to be really careful post-show with yeah. what you eat. And everyone's initial <laughs> desire is to go out with their friends, have, have a beer, have a nice dinner with some dessert, you know. And unfortunately, if you're competing the following week, <sighs> I wouldn't recommend. Yeah. <laughs> I would highly not recommend that um, because it's like – even putting like calories aside, you're you're consuming foods that you have not had in a while. Okay, whether that be gluten, sugar, anything that not even that you're necessarily intolerant to, it's just your body hasn't experienced it in a while. It could be something full of sodium, which sodium isn't bad, but when you have like a big spike of sodium, you know that's hard to get rid of the rebound within the week span okay so the rebound is kind of like that uh, fluctuation of you know water sometimes a little bit of weight too um a day or so after you have like a meal like that and you'll some people will experience like their ankles swelling up or just like put on five pounds of you know water weight their abs will disappear they'll be bloated their stomach will be distended um you know because again the food your body's like oh i haven't had this in a while it's hard to digest you might experience some some um, digestion issues. So that's really hard to get rid of within a week, okay? So I would suggest if you're competing, you know, the next week or even the week after, you know, best to stick with foods you're familiar with, like prep foods. Um, You know, of course you can have maybe a little bit more or even sometimes for me, I'll have like, you know, protein bar, you know, Diet Coke or whatever for like a dessert. Um, But, you know, nothing too crazy for me. But honestly, I, I'm not even that that hungry right after show. I'm like, I have so much adrenaline and I'm still so excited. All I want is like a shower to get this tan off me, this glaze, and just to relax my pajamas and just like soak it all in, you know? Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I realize that I'm not everyone and some people do have really, you know, really intense cravings that they've been wanting for a while. And that's all they can think about is the minute I get off stage, I'm going to have a big burger and fries and a milkshake and, and a, a nice little foo-foo drink, you she know, can't even, she, can't even, she doesn't do it. She can't even think of food. Foo-foo drink, <laughs> She's you like know? trying to think like of what cosmo- people eat. Cosmopolitan <laughs> so. uh, sex on the beach, you know, but yeah, that's, you know, you're, you're kind of putting yourself in a position um, that the following week, you're going to have to really play catch up, trying to get rid of, not, I wouldn't even say fat. Most of it won't be fat. It's going to be water. Just getting that water retention down, getting your digestion back on point. But, you know, just, you know, speak it over and have a, like a plan of action with your coach. And I would also suggest for those of you who bring like a whole tray of brownies uh, to the hotel room to enjoy after, don't, don't bring that stuff. You know, <laughs> even if you weren't, even if you were done with your season, no need to bring 
all that junk food. Um, cause you will eat it all. And hundred percent. And <laughs> every time. It seems like a good idea in the moment until you wake up the next day and you're bloated and you're fluffy and you feel swollen and you just feel like crap. You know, you really do. It's just not worth it. Um, but, you know, on the opposite end, if you are going into like an off season or at least have like a maybe a month or even a few weeks in between to where you're going to compete next, of course you can go out and have like a little meal and stuff. Um, in depending, you might even be able to have breakfast or maybe the next day just have like um more of like a macro day. Sometimes I would do that too. Like, you know, I, I would, the following day would just kind of be a macro day. If I knew I wasn't competing in a while, just be like, okay, I'm keeping my calories at 2000 or less. Um, and I can just kind of like, you know, enjoy whatever I want in that day. But it's important that you get back on track after, you know, yeah. I think what happens is people taste the good stuff for a first time in a long time and it, they start to spiral out of control because then that treat meal turns into a treat week that turns into a treat month that turns into a treat year. Yeah. And it's just, it, you know, and then going back to what you said, you're chasing that last physique at that point. Cause yeah. next thing you know, you're, you just, you just want that food and you just start craving it like crazy and you eat like more than you really should. And it yeah. just gets out of control. And I see that happen so much. It is so common. Yeah. It's I've like done it twice myself. Yeah. It's just like, you can't even help yourself. You know, yeah. it's just like, so just don't let that happen. If, if you are, you know, taking some time off until your next show or going into off season, just make sure you add in food slowly and not just like all at once and yeah. just, you know, get into that downward spiral. Next thing you know, you put on a whole bunch of weight and ruin your physique that you worked so hard for. And I always say this, be kind to your body after a show. A lot of people have this idea that, oh, I deserve this because I worked so hard. Now I'm going to eat whatever the heck I want for a week, <laughs> you know, and they think that's um, helpful or that their body needs it or it's a good thing. No, you're, you're not making your body very happy and you will know that when it rebels against you with the rebound, like, you know, it, it kind of should be a wake up call. If you rebound that your body doesn't want to do it like that. Whereas if you just do things more slowly and incorporate more calories and maybe foods that you haven't had in a while, slowly into your diet, you'll, it'll be a much better result rather than all at once, all this sugar, all this sodium, all yeah. this gluten, you know, what it I, just happens so much. What I'll typically um, recommend for people post show because you can, so you have to look at like the day too. So, well, first of all, I'll go in my, my experience. Cause I've done it too. So I always say, don't do this. We always like, Hey, don't do it. Whatever. We're experienced now. And we both have done it. I think you've, you've done it post show too. Yeah. Okay. Not but, with you though. Yeah. It's been years. <laughs> post show. I remember one time I was um, just doing like a small show in Colorado Springs in, in Denver and I ate so much um, I ate so much after the show, like I couldn't turn it off. Like I just couldn't turn it off. Like, I just ate, and I ate so I was so full because I was dieting so hard. But it's just like as soon as you can do it, and not that free, it's like you're out of jail, you know. And it's like <laughs> like you just you eat a little bit, and then you just don't stop. And it's like you have this this bottomless pit. And I knew I was doing it, but I still did it, you know. I was like, oh, I'm so lean, it's not gonna make that big of a difference, you know. Whatever, if I gained a pound, it's fine. And um, and then. And then I was driving home and I was so like sick of eating that I had to like pull over and I threw up like <laughs> not by choice. Like yeah. I threw up, I just couldn't eat the food. And then like, I'm so, I'm so in the zone of like this bodybuilder thing. I'm like, oh, well that sucks. But at least I have more room <laughs> for, like, oh. for like calories that I didn't, that I didn't use. So I'm like justifying it in my head. Like, oh, there's more room for calories there. And then I went, I went home and I was like, and I ate again. It was like an hour drive. I ate again. And then, um, and when I like started feeling like I was going to throw up again, I was like, okay, this is. I think this is like how it happens. Like, I think this is going to be a problem if I keep going, you know? And so, yeah. but it's like, you don't, you just don't, st like it doesn't, t your body does not tell you to stop until you like, like to throw up, you know? It is, it was just living in bliss for, a f you know, an hour of eating or whatever it was. But it definitely, after that, I felt terrible the rest of the week. And like, it took like two to, it took like two days to feel good. So here's, here's what I recommend now for people with having, you know, a lot of experience these days, um, especially for, bikini who are you know they're smaller people smaller stomachs and whatnot what i'll generally recommend now and this is um not it's not super new but it's kind of new i've kind of been finding the same result with it 
So the day of the show, you don't eat that much food. You're definitely not eating a ton of protein because it just sits in your stomach and makes your waistline wider. So we don't eat a ton of protein the day of the show. So there's no reason why you can't have a big protein meal after the show. Your your body's you know hasn't had any that day anyway. So you're just basically doing like almost like a a protein fast <laughs> for the most part for that day. And so at the end of the day, I'm like, have a big steak. You know, just have a big steak at the end of the day. Um, and then have a potato or have a small serving of fries with that steak after the show. And that won't be, you know, you you haven't done anything the whole day in terms of like working out or anything. You're basically sitting around most of the day waiting for the show to happen. So, um, but when I, what I've found is that when people do that, they're pretty fine with it. They're satiated. They're like, okay, that was cool. I had a Diet Coke. I had a big steak. I had a small thing, of, like a small thing of fries with it or a baked potato. And maybe they'll have like a glass of wine or something like that. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, and I tell them, okay, and then the next day on Sunday, you know, if you want to have your cheat meal then, like have your cheat meal then and then go right back to plan after that. Like the rest of your meals are clean after that. You have your cheat meal in the morning and then you go work out because you're going to use that energy um, in the morning for your workout that day and at least use some of it and have like a really good pump, have like a really good leg pump. And usually people will do like a small, you know, and some of them do a little bit bigger pancake breakfast or something like that. But then they're the rest of the day, it's like just protein based after that. Right. And then they're using that energy for the gym. And what I find is that the steak meal before, and this happened too with, um, this actually, this happened with Madison up in Australia. She told me, she's like, she's like, that steak meal was so, so big from what I was used to. She's like that. I didn't really even want to eat the next day. She's like, I was so full still from it. And I find that to be like a common thing that people don't eat as much the next day when they have that like big steak meal. I don't know if that's, yeah. I don't know if that's uh if there's any reasoning behind that, like scientifically mm-hmm. or anything, I just find that it's common, a common response um, with bikini, with the guys, I don't get so much luck, but with, with bikini, I find that, Hey, you get a big eight ounce, I don't care, 12 ounce steak, get a big one. Who cares? And then it's, you know, I, I feel like, I don't know if, what the reasoning for it is, but the, the next day, the desire isn't so strong, you know, right. versus eating all like carb things, which is like bottomless, you know, like mm-hmm. donuts, you can go through a whole. Oh yeah. Thing we'll digest so easy. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so, okay. yeah. So um, so that's my my general recommendation. You know, after the show, we had a, a barbecue, and then the, the girls had like a little. They had they did have like a little s'more after that, which was cool. I tried. You know what's funny is that I've never been camping or anything like that, and you know, California where I was, there was no like open fires or anything like that. So I never had a s'more before. I didn't think, and I was like, "There's no way I haven't had a s'more." And everyone's like, "Do you? How do you like your s'mores?" And I was like, I, "I'm like, you know, what? honestly, I don't even remember when I've had one or if I've ever had one." And then um, they're like, "No, you've had." I'm like, "No, I've had to have had s'more. There's no way I haven't had a s'more like growing up. I, I know I haven't as an adult. Cause I've never been camping." And I was like, I, not that I can remember. I was like trying to think about it. It's funny. And I'm like, have I had a s'more? Because we never went camping ever. You know, we grew up in the concrete jungle in LA. And um, I had text my mom. I'm like, mom, have I had a s'more? And everyone's like, you poor deprived. I was like, everyone's like, and my mom's like, no, I never did a s'mores. I never did s'mores before. So I don't know. And I was like, I don't know if I have. So anyway, I had my s'more experience. It was a little hype, a lot of hype. It was okay. They weren't bad. <laughs> yeah. I took two bites and I was like, it's a lot of sweet. I don't know if it's yeah. worth it. I wasn't ripped like the girls were, so, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like I justify it, you know, like, if yeah. I just got done with the show and I'm ripped, then I'll be like, yeah, okay, I could, I could justify a little bit more calories, but yeah. I'm just eating to, to eat, you know? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, it was, that was, it was actually pretty good, and then it's funny, I posted that, and I got nothing but s'more recipes for, like, a day. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. That is funny. Uh, that's funny. I think it's also important to mention as well, um, with the post-show uh, meal and the day after, you really need to make sure your hydration is on point, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, how we prep, we never cut water, you know? We never do. The only time we, I guess, cut water is just we back off um, drinking a lot of water on show day, obviously. I don't want to consume a gallon of water before I go on stage and look like I'm pregnant with water. We don't <laughs> want that. <laughs> so we definitely, um, you know, kind of be careful. We're, we're kind of careful on how much water we consume on, on today. Not even just for like, not cause we're trying to be more ripped just for the waistline. Basically, you know, you don't yeah. want to be bloated on stage. And you, also you don't want to have to pee every 10 minutes when you have a tan on the pings, the pings, the worst. Yeah, yeah. You don't want that. You don't want to be around water on show day with yeah. that tan. It can, whoop, it can go wrong. But, um, yeah. So with that being said on show day, you're probably not consuming as much liquid as you usually are. Um, so yeah, after a show, you better start, Start uh, consuming that water, <laughs> get those liquids in, and um, also for the day after. And I think that can also help with cravings and uh, that feeling of hunger because your stomach, you know, it, it doesn't have any water in it. So there's nothing really, there, the space is not really being occupied, if that makes sense. So I think that will also help um, help with uh, preventing rebounds and also help you from not overeating um, 
the next day too, you know? So that's just something to be aware of is, you know, just make sure you're hydrated. Yeah. And so coming to the conclusion of this podcast here, but if there's anyone that had any like, you know, real quick questions about post show stuff that's watching on Instagram. I dealt on the... Yeah, on the Instagram. On the I'm telling you, you're looking pretty good. You're not as noodly as you think. You're not as noodly as you think. But anyway, any of you guys want to ask any questions on Instagram here? So for you guys watching on the podcast, um, or I guess you wouldn't be watching on a podcast, for on YouTube watching and uh, listening on the podcast, we do this live as like a rough version on, uh, on, inter- on Instagram. So you're always welcome to join that on Mondays, somewhere around 1130 usually is when we start. So... I guess that's it. So there's no questions coming up. Someone asked about what your cardio routine is now. Well, she's doing a show on Saturday. So she just jumped back into cardio oh, today. Oh, yes. So. Yeah, I, I tried it yesterday. <laughs> I, I don't think I was ready for it. But, yes, I started back with the cardio today. Um, that's just basically to keep the keep everything moving and keep my body regular from not rebounding. I don't think I'm going to rebound, though, because I was really good after a show. But just to keep back on track and, and not to uh, – Get any post-show fluffs? Is that how we should say it? Yeah. Post-show fluffs? We're just trying to avoid the ah. rebound for you at this, yes. you know, too, because you never know when that's going to, y- yes. you try to be as good as you can, and sometimes it still happens, yeah. and you're just like. Sometimes, I mean, with travel and with, like, your water, yeah, it can happen, um, even if you're careful, but we try to prevent it. I don't feel like it's coming on yet, but we'll, you know, we'll see. Um, but, yeah, it's good to get a little sweat going on after the show, and just to get back into my normal routine, you know? Um, so, I don't think cardio will be too intense this week because at this point I'm kind of just like maintaining and making sure I'm not getting too flat. So depending on how Adam responds to my check-in that I sent in earlier, we'll <laughs> see how the cardio goes. But as we get closer to the show, we taper down the cardio anyway, um, you know, because we don't want to be like inflamed or anything like that when it comes to intense cardio. Because sometimes if your cardio is too intense and you're doing intense cardio up till the day of the show, you're probably going to hold some, some uh, water in your probably like your your legs and stuff so yeah so there you go um so car yeah cardio will taper down towards the end of the week but right now we're going hard at it just yep. in case, just in case. Um, so we'll go hard for about three days mm-hmm. and then uh, after that we'll taper it down to reduce any inflammation she might be having and building up in her legs um hopefully avoid any post-show rebound and that's how we're going we go from show to show we're trying to just do it just in case and if she gets too lean over the next three days because she was already lean as she needed to be obviously um, if she gets too lean, then it gives us more room to load some carbs. And if we need to spill her a little bit on purpose, um, which is never something we want to do, that's not a fun thing to try to target. Yeah, it's kind of risky. <laughs> yeah, targeting a spill is not something you want to do. And so um, we do that only if she gets too lean, but I don't think it'll happen in the in the three days. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of how it'll go. And then the load will be a little later this week. Then usually we do a front load. So it's a little bit different. Of a, of a peak and it won't be a heavy, the, the plan is that it won't be a heavy load. It'll be a light load and she stays full. Um, and she, you know, diets down hard for a few days and then there, that's, that's kind of the plan. So we'll mm-hmm. see, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, that post-show water weight regown is, is real. You do got to drink that water. I, oh, I've had, yeah. I had a friend in, um, in Denver who ended up in the hospital from the post-show water weight rebound oh, being so, wow. but he ate, he was like, he told me, he was like, dude, I ate like a dick. He's like, he's like, I, he's like, I went, so he's like, I was stupid. I ate like everything. And then he just had so much, so he was a bodybuilder. So he was like cutting his water too and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he was like, and then, and then he's like, and then I just ate all that food and I drank beer. And he's like the next day he was like holding so much water. I think he said he put on 40 something pounds within like a period of like 10 days. Oh my God. And he just ended up in the hospital and they had to like IV drip him with like oh Lasix to get diuretic to like get him. Yeah. Like his blood pressure was through the roof. He was like a mess. Yeah, it was like, so that stuff can't happen. Unlike, like, you know, you just got to be, I mean, I'm sure he went pretty hard, but he also went really hard in the prep and then he went pretty hard in the, the, yeah. the I mean, they, the body boats go harder than the bikini girls because they do, you know, cut water and things like that too. Yeah, but, I mean, the goal is, you know, especially if you're looking for a show to show basis to be as consistent as possible and to make peak week um, as easy on your body as possible, which is, you know, it doesn't change that much for me usually for peak week. So it's not like we do all these crazy things. It's just kind of, we just like to coast into peak weeks, you know, kind of make it just like a regular week, except for tweaking a few things like carbs and, and uh, cardio and, um, you know, stuff like that. But it's not, not that much different from day to day life, which is kind of how bikini is supposed to be. You're just supposed to yeah. roll into it. But, you know, I think the, the, the um, less prepared you are going to the show, the more risk you have to take to get ready. Yeah, you know that's, what I'm a good, saying? that's a good way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, like so if you're coming into peak week and you you know you're not lean enough, 
you know, oh, you got to start doing a lot of cardio up until the show day, cutting, cutting your carbs really early, like stuff like that. And then you might show up on show day like inflamed or a uh, depleted looking, but like a skinny fat look because you didn't, you didn't have a chance to recarb because you were just trying to get lean, you know, so it's always better to be prepared and already ready going into peak week. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, yeah, it's, it's hard to nail. And that's the thing too, with these girls who do these like really grind preps, because they're trying to like lose, you know, 20 pounds in 12 weeks or something like that. And they're like, yo, I can do it. I just, and they'll, they'll send pictures sometimes to me. Um, and they'll be like, I can do this. No, I know I can do it in 12 weeks. I'm like, yeah, you can do it, but you're not going to be a hundred percent. Even if you do reach your conditioning, which is unlikely in that period of time, like all the things that need to happen during peak week in your body looking you know, like it looks fresh, like how you're saying. They want you to look like you just walked off, walked out of the house and are going to the beach. That's how they want you to look in bikini. That's how I was told to me. Obviously, no one's doing that, but that's how it's supposed to look healthy and vibrant and your face not all sucked in and, you know, and look like you haven't killed yourself for six months to get there. It definitely has a look, though. Yeah. That, what you're talking about, you can definitely tell sometimes. It's like, you know, that death face look and then also kind of like you'll be lean in some areas, but like kind of like a... Sometimes the skin doesn't have a chance to catch up with um, the weight loss too. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just no one, no one. I mean, it's so rare that someone nails a prep that's like that. You know, yeah. like nailing it because you got to understand. Like when you first off, if you're saying, t- usually how I look at a prep is like if someone's 16 weeks out, really I look at them as 15 weeks out, maybe even 14 weeks out because they need to be ready ahead of time. So you one, if someone needs to lose 20 pounds in 12 weeks, well, really they need to lose it in like 10. Because those last two weeks, because you're going to work so hard the first 10, those last two weeks, we need to really reduce that inflammation and really, you know, let you get you looking healthy again and reduce your total cardio and reduce your, uh, your workouts and increase your calories. So you look like healthy and vibrant and get on stage. And it's like, you don't have any room for that. You're going all the way hard until like three days before the show. And you're like, okay, I hope this works. I hope you look, and you're like crossing your fingers that you look hundred percent. And it's like, it's, it's not how it works. You know, it's not how this thing works. Okay. So we do have one question here. We have a couple questions, but this one's a good one. Um, how to taper down post-show cardio without gaining back too much weight uh, from from going back to maintenance calories from Rachel Huen. Huen? I'm butchering the last name. Rachel Huen. Huen? Huen? Um, so the, the, the way that you do that, okay, the, first off, when you look at maintenance calories, understand your maintenance calories aren't where they were when you first started. Okay, so if you started off burning, let's say you had 2,000 calorie maintenance, and then you did a show and you dieted hard for 16 weeks. You don't just jump back into 2000 calories because your body isn't there anymore. It's at a different stage. So that's why people gain a lot of weight back too. They're like, oh, I'm just going to go to maintenance calories, which I recommend. I do recommend you go to maintenance calories, but understand your 2000 calorie maintenance calories that they were is now a caloric surplus, right? It's, it's your body has shifted and adapted to the low calories that you have. So yes, we will bring your calories up to maintenance calories. And I haven't been clear on that before. It is the new maintenance calories, not the presumed Harris Benedict equation maintenance calories, which is a different thing. So, um, you know, it's a lot different with the bodybuilding world. And so the way I'll do it is I've talked about it before. I bring up protein first because it's easier to bring calories up through protein without storing fat. And then I slowly just start adding macros in. So I'll start adding in carbs later. Um, and just kind of taper in. I taper in not just the calories. I also taper in the macros. So that's a, the that's a way I'll usually do it. Um, for people. And that's a a really successful way. And then the way you do it where you're not gaining any weight back is you're keeping your cardio. Um, So first I'll increase calories and then I'll decrease cardio and I'll do it like on separate weeks. Usually Um, the first week I'll do both. And then after that, it's like one or the other. So then I'll increase calories, but I'm not going to decrease cardio the same day I increased calories. You're too susceptible to gaining back body fat. And then the next week decrease cardio. And then I keep the calories the same, right? And then I kind of keep toggling back and forth and you're still doing check-ins, you're still doing measurements, you're still checking yourself, you're making sure you're not gaining too much back. If you do gain back too much, then guess what? You're going to probably get an increase of cardio or a decrease of calories that week. I don't care if it's your post-show. I don't want you gaining back that much weight. And that's not realistic. You know, you just stored about, uh, you know, two pounds of body fat that week because we went too hard. Well, you got some energy stored up there that we can use for that week. And you're just, everything's going to stay the same or maybe even go up. So um, that's how you do it. You keep, you keep close, just as close of an eye on the off season as you do in the in season. If you do that for like six weeks, eight weeks, you know, you're usually going to be out of the hole at that point. And then you start adding in, you know, macro meals. You know, I do that. I'm, I'm, I always say I'm against like macros, but in the off season, I'm like, no, if you want to do a macro meal per day or it's like one meal a day and we can still track most of the data, I'm cool with that. 
um, in the off season, you know? So then it becomes like very normal life. You're eating clean 80% of the time, 20% of the time you're throwing your things in there. You got your, your metabolism back up to full speed. Your cardio is maintainable. Your calories are realistic, realistically high enough. You're having a meal a day. You don't feel like you're deprived and life is good. And then you start prep again from that stage and it's not that hard, you know? But um, if you go the opposite way, it becomes really hard. You need to gain back 20 pounds. You're eating all junk food and now your body's craving nothing but junk food. And then you're trying to clean it up and lose 20 pounds. Uh, it's, you know, it's a lot harder of a prep, you know? So yeah, so that's how, that's how I recommend it too. And then uh, I think the only other question we have, we'll, we'll t- take off after this one, but um, someone just wants to know, how do I get glutes like you? Like, <laughs> oh, I th- like you? <laughs> like me. Did they say Ashley or did they say Adam? <laughs> they did. They did make a, a, a distinction of you. Oh, me? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> for one, I pray to the glute gods every That's night. True. Every night before I go to bed. Uh, a good 15 minutes praying on to my knees, God. just praying to the glute Who gods. Who is that God, by the way? <laughs> we got to come up with a name for him. Um, but honestly, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, you know, I think I'll, just like consistency over time. Um, also, genetically speaking, I'm, I'm, it's easier for me to kind of build in that area than, let's say, the upper body. Um, track also, you know, has, has a lot to do with it. But a lot, you know. A lot has happened over a long period of time, and little by little, they've gotten better and better. And I think, like, even last year, it was, like, such a big difference from last year, from the year prior. I was like, whoa, where did these come from? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm happy where they're at now, and, you know, um, continue to work hard on them, and, yeah, we'll see if we can get them even better. Who knows? Yeah, you know what? And there's, I said that was the last question. There's one, there is actually one that I'm going to go into because I want to never cause confusion, and this is a good one. Um, this question is from Fit and Dover. Oh, Fit and Dover forty. Um, it says, if we are not competing but want to maintain a lean lifestyle, is the goal still to train the body to need minimal cardio? Okay, so Fit and Over forty. It's also in the name of this. The answer is in the name of this because you're over forty. Um, okay, so physique competitions is never. How do I explain this? Okay, so you have health and fitness. That's one thing. Physique competitions is not health and fitness. People confuse the two of those way too much. Just because health and fitness is the gateway to physique competitions doesn't mean it still remains health and fitness. This is physique sports. This is something different. It is not designed to be, it, the purpose of it is not health. It's a side effect of it if you do it right, but it's not the purpose of it. So that's, we let's clarify that first off. So all these, like a lot of coaches will be like, oh, this should be the he- healthy and easy and this and that. I'm like, no no sport is healthy and easy and this and that. Like every sport has someone has knee problem, a shoulder problem. A, they're, you know, they're working their body to hell. You know, they have to hit a certain diet to hit a certain weight. Try boxing or wrestling, like seeing, trying to make weight, fighting, you know, trying to make weight. That's not healthy. A side effect of the training is healthy, right? That's health and lifestyle, right? Health and fitness. But physique sports is not designed for that. You know, um, can you be healthy doing it? Yes, absolutely. Ashley's a good testament of that. Her, you know, she's not too crazy on everything. Um, so maybe maybe she pushes it sometimes with the dieting for longer periods, which is probably not the healthiest thing. But she's doing it in a way she's monitoring her health, and it's so far everything's been pretty good, right? So a side effect of it. So that's not the goal. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, but now, if you're doing this just to live a lean lifestyle and you're over forty, like you're saying, then you should have both. You should have a good fit body. And you should have a good healthy body. And in that scenario, I would recommend you doing cardio most days of the week, if not every single day, just to get your fit for your overall heart health. Heart health, heart is the number one killer, right? <laughs> now in physique sports, it's different because we're trying to change your settings around. We're trying to lower your cardio and attack it for so you can get ultra, ultra lean for a period of time. So we're talking about setup here and and not reducing cardio to nothing, but um, we're getting it pretty low where health health is still gonna happen. But it's not like, okay, let's just worry about her heart health or whatever. The, that's the primary goal. That's not the primary goal for physique sports. Primary goal for health and fitness, um, absolutely, it should be. Longevity should be part of that. You should be doing cardio all the time for a, for a healthy heart. Um, generally, 20 to 30 minutes a day is what's recommended of doing that for like a healthy, just like a healthy lifestyle, healthy, healthy body. So um, I want to always clarify that because sometimes I think people get confused because they think it's health and fitness only what we're talking about. It is kind of what we're talking about, but it's the gateway to physique sports, which is not the primary mission of physique sports. It's the it's the side effect of it, but not even for most, even the goal, right? So it's it's just something 
to like clarify. I know it's a, that's a weird one, right? So, and everyone has their own opinion on that too. So um, I think, yes, do physique sports the healthiest way possible, but yes, it is not designed to, you know, it's not designed for that. So anyway, there you go. <laughs> well, that's that, I guess. Huh? Yeah. All that's right. That. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate all the support and love and just having you as listeners and viewers. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yay. Listen to little of us. Little of us. Yeah. You could be doing anything right now, but you're listening to us, and that's pretty special. It is, right? Yes. It's pretty cool. I do. I, you know what my favorite thing is still when I'm, like, talking? And, some, and, like, so I'll be talking to someone. This happened This happened the other day outside of here, and someone heard my voice. And it was, it was the, it's what's really funny, it was, like, this ultimate, like, man's man, which I didn't think would be, like, listening to the podcast. He was, like, a guy. It was at the, it was at the shooting range, if it tells you anything. And he was, like... He's like, I thought it was you, and then I heard your voice. I was like, Oh, it's you. Your your wife, my wife, listens to you all the time, and I always have to listen to you too <laughs> because uh-huh. my wife's listening to you. He's like, But I find it really interesting, real oh, cool, dude. Nice. And I was like, That's I was like, Yeah, you're not my typical viewer. <laughs> I was like, This big burly dude. He's like, <laughs> It was pretty funny, but um, it was that's really cool. That's one of my favorite things. So thank you guys for listening. I really do appreciate it. And I guess that's it, guys. We appreciate it, and we'll talk to you later. <laughs>